Streaming now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. And good afternoon, everyone. Phil Panarski here with the Wood TV Live Desk. Hope you're having a great day so far. They were once considered an impressive decorative planting tree, but uh, now many biologists across Michigan and really much of the country are considering them a pretty big nuisance. We're, of course, talking about the calorie pear trees. Digital reporter Matt Jarowski joins us now because that was the theme and the focus on his latest Sunday story. And we're going to be getting into everything you need to know about the calorie pear trees if you do want to know anything about it. Mm -hmm. uh, all that more information can be found right now over on our website, woodtv.com. But Matt, of course, thank you so much for being here again. Really looking forward to talking about this one. Uh, they hit kind of close home to me, uh, being from Milwaukee. Of course, yeah. uh, they are all over the place there. So I am very familiar with the calorie pear trees. Obviously, they're very pretty with the white flowers, but mm -hmm. man, do they stink, especially when they first bloom. That kind of offensive smell everybody kind of smells around springtime. Right. That's typically what they are. Um, and your story does a great job of explaining what they are, how they came here, and really why they are an invasive species now, according to some biologists. But we want to first, of course, start off with how they got here. How exactly did these calorie pear trees end up in really mo much of the country, but specifically here in Michigan? Right. So like a lot of species, unfortunately, are considered invasive species now. They were brought here intentionally. Uh, the trees were brought over from Europe. There are uh, a, a lot of positives that people thought this would be a great tree. For one, uh, they're, they're really pretty. Uh, they have their nice little white flowers that bloom early in the spring. So people anxious to, to get out in winter and see some flowers and some green. Mm. Really love those trees. Um, and they do pretty well in urban areas too. So they're easy as far as decorative planting went. to so just line them up and down your streets and that kind of thing. So a lot of really where you see them across Michigan now is in urban areas. And it's one of those things like once you know about it, once you can recognize the tree, mm -hmm. you start to see them everywhere. Right. Um, they're and a so hard to miss too. The, right, well, yeah, because they're one of the first things to bloom. So while most trees are still barely budding, they have these big white flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, and to its credit, uh, they are pretty. However, now that we have them established here and they're kind of growing beyond their borders, we're seeing more of the the cons to that pro and con argument, really to the point where uh, Ohio has actually banned the sale of trees. You can no longer buy them or sell them in Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, they're considered an invasive species here in Michigan, and we'll get into that a little bit more uh, and as far as why it's not regulated yet. But still, uh, it's uh, it's a problem. And, you know, as you can attest to your time in Milwaukee, <laughs> Not everyone's a big fan. No, absolutely not. We're actually going to pull up a picture. I'm sure. I'm sure everybody has kind of seen these around uh, their neck of the woods. Um, we're taking, you know, another look at them, of course. But uh, Matt, I mean, talk about this. Uh, what what really is the cause of this whole commotion about them being invasive? What makes them so invasive and such right. a problem? As I mentioned, you know, they do have that fishy kind of smell. That's how what I always equated mm -hmm. it to. Um, but, I mean, that's that can't be enough for them to be considered invasive, correct? No, but let's go to the top of the list. So environmental-wise, there are other reasons, but number one is they stink. Uh, they smell <laughs> real bad. Uh, the DNR uh, expert that I talked to put it bluntly. It's like a lot of people use certain descriptors, whether it's, yeah, dead fish, mm -hmm. rotting meat. She said dog poo. Um, so whatever your personal descriptor is, it's not great. I think all of them probably work out pretty well. No, no, yeah, it's not good. Um, but there are actually a lot of cons. So obviously, they spread quickly, uh, and they kind of crowd out other native species. And one reason why that's a problem is they're not really a, a key player in the food web. One of the reasons why it was why so many planters liked it as an ornamental plant uh, is because bugs don't like it. Very few mm -hmm. bugs eat the leaves, and so you don't have to worry about bugs tearing up your trees that way. Uh, that being said, a few critters eat their little pears. I know there's a picture of them that are small and brown and hard. Outside of that, there's really no any nutritional value stretching beyond the trees. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to an oak or a maple or other trees that kind of continue the food web and allow bugs and then the bugs feed the birds and all that kind of thing, it plays a role. So they really hurt that way. Um, they have big ugly thorns, most of them do. Uh, which is not ideal. And then, especially coming out of another instance of, of power outages, they tend to break really easily. And so if you have pears on your property, you're going to be replacing them. Uh, and heaven forbid it's near a power line and some strong winds come through, that's just more liable for, for uh, bad things to happen there. 
Mm-hmm. It's a kind of a freeloading plant, I would say. They kind of just take, yeah. they don't really give back to the rest of the environment. They can really yeah. cause a lot of damage. Like you said, they tend to break really easily. Um, I know we've had a couple of, you know, uh, that's always a big worry, especially with consumers' energy around these big storms, you know, obviously yeah. down par- power lines, and this is obviously not helping out with that case at all. But, Matt, you know, uh, as, as we talked about, a lot of people have these. A lot of people have seen them, but some people probably have them in their backyards maybe or on their property. I mean, you, you touched on that Ohio is already starting to implement some regulations mm-hmm. on that. I mean, should people that do have them on their property maybe even enjoy having them out? I mean, should they be worried about potentially having to get rid of them or maybe speaking with the DNR about any possible way to kind of help mitigate this uh, calorie pear tree right. epidemic we've been having? So short answer is no. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have a calorie pear tree on your property, whether you like it or not, you don't have to rip it out. In Michigan, it is not. It is considered an invasive species, but it is not regulated. So it's still legal to buy or sell or plant one of these trees on your property. Um, so yeah, so no one's going to come mandate that you have to take it out. At least, I can't imagine they're, I mean, they're certainly not doing it right now, and I don't imagine them doing it anytime mm-hmm. soon. Um However, they do encourage people to remove them. Uh, they have very specific ways they need to be removed because if you, if you don't do it a certain way, uh, the root systems can continue to spread and re-sprout. Um, and then they also uh, are encouraging people if you see outbreaks on public property to let them know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you are willing to remove a tree on your property, they have a list of alternatives that are much better for the environment, native plants, uh, plants that better help the food web, all that stuff, all those links are available inside the story mm-hmm. at woodtv.com. Yeah, and I highly encourage everybody that if you want to know a little bit more about the calorie pear tree, or maybe this is your first introduction to it, I'm um, sorry, but, but I'm right. sure you are going to be seeing them a lot more as we do progress throughout the springtime and into the summer. So probably a good idea to get a little bit more background information. And again, as Matt said, all of that can be found right now on our website, woodtv.com. Matt, thank you so much for stopping by again. We really do appreciate it. Anytime. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. And I want to talk, uh, excuse me, I want to thank everybody else for tuning in to this latest edition of the Wood TV Live Desk. I'm Phil Pinarski, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.